Funding for the Maddie Report is made possible by grants from the California Emerging Technology Fund, leaders in the quest for digital equity. The James Irvine Foundation, committed to a California where all low-income workers have the power to advance economically. Fresno State Associated Students, Inc. Students serving students. BNSF Railway, moving our economy for 160 years, and the wonderful company. The Maddie Report is also made possible thanks to contributions from Harris Ranch Inn and Restaurant and E&J Gallo Winery. From the Maddie Institute, the Public Policy Institute for the Valley's four public universities, this is the Maddie Report with Executive Director of the Maddie Institute, Mark Kepler. Welcome. California's voters can sometimes see a, seem a bit disinterested and disengaged, frankly, sometimes at epic proportions. How do we get citizens to spend more effort and be, to become better informed and better engaged? Um, our guest has been a leading advocate in this area for some time, first as Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, and now as the President and CEO of the Public Policy Institute of California. And she is Tani Cantel Sakayuki. Um, welcome, Your Honor, to, to the Matter Report. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, it's, and, and here we are back again. Um, you know, Governor Schwarzenegger uh, nominated you as Chief Justice in 2010 uh, to the Supreme Court. I interviewed you five years later uh, in 2015, and our conversation really wasn't about the court's decisions. It was really focused more on uh, the importance of civic education and, and civic literacy. Very important things for you. A decade later, you're still at it. Why is this so important to you? It's important because civic education and uh, civic literacy really are the tools to participate and improve our democracy, our local communities. And there's always new audiences and even audiences that are already uh, well known in the areas of civics or are comfortable in civics are still learning. It's an applicability to all the new issues that are facing California. Yeah. And that's, you know, you, you bring up a really good point there. And that is, you know, we seem to be living in, a, in an age of, of misinformation where it's difficult to know what's true and what isn't. Um, and I'm just wondering, you know, studies also show that people aren't really that aware of, you know, their own government, how the constitutional democracy works. And that seems like a pretty lethal combination, misinformation and lack of understanding. From your perspective, do you think the situation has gotten better or worse? I, I really think how you phrase it as lethal combination is accurate. And my belief is it has gotten worse. It seems that it's more volatile. It is uh, more inflammatory. It's also wrong and it's polarizing. So absolutely, it's worse. Yeah. And then that's obviously very problem problematic because you have to be able to work across the aisle and get things done. Um, and that if you're not operating from the same basis of facts, that's a problem. Let me ask you this. You know, the recent U.S. Supreme Court decisions you know, some of them have uh, reversed years of what we thought was settled precedents. Uh, how do you think that's impacted people's view of the court um, in a constitutional democracy? Or, or should we look at, be looking at this a different way? Should we be looking at this as, you know what, this is an, an opportunity. These seismic legal changes that we're seeing is really an opportunity to discuss the court's role in society. Is it a teachable moment? I certainly think it's a teachable moment, but it's also not has it's not been a great reflection on the court because part of the teachable moment means, well, what is the third branch of government? How are they able to do this? How long are their terms? Are they elected? It raises a lot of questions in many ways about how the court operates, its legitimacy as well. Um, so it has problems, but it's teachable because what we're seeing is while wow, the Constitution matters, we're still debating what it means, we're still debating the Bill of Rights, and by the way, states appear to be gaining uh, more power from these decisions. Yeah, and it, it, so it's, it's more of moving those decisions to the local level uh, as opposed maybe to, to at the federal level. Yes. It could be a good thing. The, the, what is it? The, the, the uh, laboratories of democracy are, are, are the states. Uh, you're certainly, one of the things you're certainly seeing is with the Dobbs decision overturning Roe versus Wade, it certainly has gotten people engaged. I was mm -hmm. talking recently about a, a recent uh, Wisconsin Supreme Court election, an off-year election, typically very low turnout. In this case, very high voter turnout. So people may not have been paying attention before. They're paying attention now. Let me ask you this. Um, you know, what do you think needs to be done to improve the public's, you know, generally, and then maybe specifically the younger generation's uh, understanding of being able to discern facts from fiction uh, and understand actually how government works? I think that we need to talk about government and how it operates and that we need to emphasize critical thinking and collaboration. 
And I think we can do that in the schools and we are doing it in several programs, even in Fresno are doing it in the schools as well as throughout California. But we need to teach young leaders and older leaders need to model it, that there is critical thinking where you bring, you use facts that everyone can agree to because facts are facts. And from there you form your opinions and your strategy, but we all start with facts. And I think it has to be a far more civil conversation than what we're seeing in social media and sometimes regular media. Well, that's such a good point. I think a lot of people, perhaps my generation, kind of yearn for the Walter Cronkite you know, era when and everybody agreed to the same set of facts. We may disagree how to interpret those facts, but now there seems to be a dispute even what the facts are. So that is somewhat problematic. Um, up next, we're going to talk about why would a retiring chief justice of the California Supreme Court decide to lead a public policy think tank? And what does she hope to accomplish in that position? That conversation in a moment. This is the Maddie Report. Welcome back. I'm Mark Kepler with the Maddie Institute. We're talking with the Honorable Tane Kantel Sakiue, who is the former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court. She recently retired from the court and accepted an offer to lead one of the state's preeminent private nonpartisan think tanks, the Public Policy Institute of California. So I guess the first question is, why? Why would you take on a role as CEO or President of the PPIC? Well, first of all, PPIC is a premier organization, a nonpartisan think tank dedicated to uh, data-driven surveys and reports to improve and inform public policy. And at the Supreme Court, when I was Chief Justice for 12 years, and even 20 years before that, when I was on the Superior Court and the Appellate Court, as a jurist, we deal in facts. Facts matter. That's where we start. And for courts, the facts start with what the jury finds typically. And those are the facts. And we work from there. And so PPIC starts from facts. PPIC, like the courts, is about integrity. The facts speak for themselves. And while we might want facts to be otherwise or think that they are something else, we hew to the facts. And that's what PPIC does. And from there, we inform policy. And so it is a the reason I also like it is, unlike the courts, I am not unwinding a crisis when policy doesn't work. Rather, I get to be on the front end to inform policy. Yeah, I think you referred to it earlier as a uh, Humpty Dumpty, where you're putting it back together again after a mistake. It's always, it, was, it reminds me when I was in practice, right? The client always comes to you after the problem as opposed to coming to you before the problem. <laughs> you, know, you, have to, you have to deal with what you got to deal with. Um, let me ask you this. You know, we seem to be living in increasingly... Uh, interconnected and digitized world where misinformation is spread either intentionally or unintentionally. Um, how do you think the PPIC can break through that uh, din and inform the public on these important issues in a nonpartisan fact-based way? Thank you. Well, we, as you know, strive to maintain our nonpartisanship and provide facts. And we do it in a variety of formats that we hope makes it digestible in multiple ways to the public primarily policy leaders, but to the public as well. So we'd have reports, but we also have summaries of the report that we call a policy brief. We have blogs, we have videos. We do a live speaker series where we invite the public for free to have lunch on us, thanks to our generous donors. And we provide Q and A with some of the state's leaders about what's happening. So we provide many formats and we're free. Just go to the PPIC website, click on us, and see the data, see the survey, learn about our state. You know, and your stuff is is pretty digestible. I mean, it's, it's thorough and it's digestible. But I want to ask you, you know, what is your target audience? Is your target audience those policy wonks that want to learn more about state policy? Or is it the general public? Well, as a think tank, our target audience is really the decision makers, the policy leaders, the legislators, the constitutional officers of California who are actually in the position to write the law that makes up the policy that they are pursuing. But at the same time at PPIC, we realize that there are stakeholders in that process and people who are influenced or affected by bad policy who go to the legislators, their constituents. And we also know that local communities and local issues inform the legislature as well for state solutions. So those people are also our target, including the governor and other, other executive officers are our target to provide them with data so that they can make informed choices for all of Californians. Well, there, there's no question that PPIC is very inf influential uh, in that space. I mean, legislators, uh, policy people are always looking to the stuff that you're writing. So I think you're having that effect. But let me ask you this. So there are other you know, think tanks out there that are very good. Um, mm -hmm. The Legislative Analyst Office uh, kind of focuses on the on the budget, but other things. Uh, 
the state auditor, um, the Little Hoover Commission, all give really do really good job in reports and, and whatnot. But you're different. You're a private, uh, nonpartisan think tank. So what do you bring to the table that, that maybe they don't? Well, all of the organizations you mentioned are indeed impressive and do terrific work, but they're all uh, state funded in some possible way. And as a result, a lot of their duties are written into statute. Now, PPIC, however, is a nonprofit, independent, uh, charitable organization, a 501c3. And so we are independent. While we look at the same issues, we are we pick what we want to write on. We try to write on relevant matters that are going to affect California. And no one approves our work. Uh, no one tells us what to write or how to write. And so we are in that sort of public service space without government, uh, uh, any kind of government funding or any approval required, independent. Well, yeah, sense. that's true. The state auditor, for example, is told, here are the reports we want you to, or things we want you to look into by the legislature. So you, you are a little bit different in that respect. Well, you know, we're all a product of, in one way or another, of our background and experiences. What background and experience uh, does our guest bring to leading one of the state's most respected nonpartisan public policy think tanks? That conversation in a moment. This is the Maddie Report. Welcome back. I'm Mark Kepler with the Maddie Institute. We're talking with a recently retired former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court and newly appointed head of the PPIC, the Honorable Tani Cantel Sakeyue, uh, about how public policy can be fashioned both inside the government and outside the government. So you were appointed uh, to the high court by a Republican governor in 2010, spent 12 years as the Chief Justice. How do you think those experiences or that experience will influence your work at the PPIC? I think that my work as a Chief Justice of California for the last 12 years leading the judiciary, but also my work um, on the trial court where I was a Superior Court judge for 14 years and then an appellate justice for six years, it has taught me that people have various points of view, passionate and principled, and that no one is ever 100% completely correct, and that when we work together with civility and we collaborate, that we always have a better product and a better solution that we can all live with and all be feel that we're a part of. So bringing that to PPIC is easy because that's what PPIC basically already does. Starting with the facts and the data after inquiry, PPIC brings together disparate voices, hears them, listens to them and writes and writes fairly and objectively to inform policy, to improve policy. And I think that really my work in a black robe is very similar to the work that PPIC does in its efforts to uh, make for a better California. You know, actually, I think you can probably sum up what the PPIC is doing is, is they, their approach is no one has a monopoly on good ideas. Um, mm -hmm. Both sides have good ideas on the table. It needs to sit there and really analyze them and see which really might work best uh, in, in a given situation. You know, you're also kind of unique in that you're only the second woman and the first person of color to serve as chief justice. Um, how has that identity experience influenced your outlook on public policy? Well, I can honestly say that having started out in 1984 as a, as a young prosecutor and working for the governor's office and going to the bench thereafter has exposed me to a lot of issues that uh, people have in California. And that is starting with family and education and housing and economic mobility and the struggles therein. And I can say that having been a jurist, I have seen people's solutions and I've seen what laws can do to change people's lives. So as uh, Chief Justice and then coming here, I think I have a very open mind about all the different ways that we can craft a solution. And I'm very aware that life changes and circumstances change and we must change with those as well. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, when you were Chief Justice, you did considerable work on civic education and engagement among Californians. That was really one of the hallmarks of your tenure. How do you plan to continue that work um, as head of the PPIC? Well, I think that PPIC in and of itself already has done and been really a civic leader writ large, right? From the beginning, it's been a nonpartisan, objective, fact-driven, data-driven uh, report think tank. And so in many ways, with their information being accessible to the public, it does its own form of civic engagement uh, and I think education just by existing and having people read their work. But also uh, PPIC is cognizant of the need to continue to do more. So part of its strategic plan is to engage more in civics, that is literacy, education, and engagement. 
And so we're going to do more. We already do a speaker series events where we bring the public for free to listen to speakers. We provide lunch. We do a Q&A, not only in person, but online. But we're also going to reach out and convene and find a way that PPIC can add value uh, to the civic need space that might be different that only PPIC can provide. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. People, uh, you know, get their information differently. You know, when I was growing up, it was, you know, you had the three networks. I'm dating mm -hmm. myself here, but um, that's where you got your information. Now, multiple sources, multiple platforms and how people get their information really varies from generation to generation. That's right. And that's why PPIC is, has so many formats for our information. Not only do we write a report, we write a summary of the report. And then our premier researchers give a video on the report. And then we do fact sheets and explainers and we disseminate them to the public, not only in hard copy when I walk over to the legislature if that's needed, but also online. And uh, we also hope that other sources will pick us up and quote us. And they usually do. <laughs> so up next, we're going to talk about what some of the big issues that the PPIC is going to be looking at in the near term and any further in the future. That conversation in a moment, this is The Maddie Report. Welcome back, I'm Mark Kepler with The Maddie Institute. We're talking with the former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, who in retirement has taken on a new role, that is President and CEO of the Public Policy Institute of California. She is the Honorable Tani Kentel Sakayue. Um, so some would say in, in today's jargon, you continue to be a key <clears throat> state influencer when it comes to public policy. <laughs> um, and so my daughter tells me, my teenage daughter tells me that an influencer is, is an important thing. So. You know, you guys do a lot of work. And one of the things you do is this uh, statewide survey of Californians and their government. I know Mark Baldessari, your predecessor, who's continued to be engaged in that. Why, why is that so important? Yes, well, Mark, as you indicate, my predecessor did a terrific job of building up PPIC. And um, when he retired, I asked him to stay on. That was one of my first duties as a uh, CEO, I sought to keep Mark and he agreed to remain as our survey director. But the reason that's so important in many ways is that uh, Mark's survey via PPIC is reliable, credible, excellent quality, and because it's so well respected in the state. And when I go over to the legislature and meet the members and the new members, even just these last few weeks, all ask about the survey and what their survey showed. And so you know that we just finished one of our surveys. Right. It's, it's, it's very important. And one of the things that's shown up in your survey recently, last couple of years, certainly is the importance of uh, homelessness and housing. Um, that's a, a really big issue in the state. It's been at the forefront now for a number of years. I mean, what are your findings? What are some of your key findings in that area? Well, we're finding that just as you mentioned, per the survey, that many Californians, a supermajority, continue to be concerned about both housing and its affordability and the concern that their families will not be able to purchase a home in California. So there is their own family concern about migration out of California because the housing prices are unattainable. At the same time, the survey also reflected that a supermajority of Californians have reported to see an increase in homelessness and that is a concern in their community. Uh, so you know that on their mind are housing, homelessness, the economy, and the pandemic, as well as we asked about their views on the governor's budget. And most people agree with the governor's direction for this year's budget. You know, but he did talk about when he first came in office in 2018 about a Marshall Plan for housing. And he was talking about building half a million homes a year. They're actually building about 100,000 homes a year. So only about 20% of that, that target. Um, it's, it's big. It's a heavy lift. Um, the government can't do it alone. It has to be a public-private sector partnership. And it is a big driver. Housing costs in California are a big driver for our poverty rates um, because housing is so unaffordable for so many Californians. Um, so, it's a, so it's a big issue. Uh, let, let me kind of transition here and ask you about another issue that's particularly important to those of us who live in the San Joaquin Valley, and that's the issue of water. Now, you guys have something called the Water Policy Center, uh, run, uh, founded and run by Ellen Hannock. She's recently uh, said she's going to be stepping down. But very influential when it comes to water policy. You know, what are you trying to accomplish with the Water Policy Center? Thank you. Well, Ellen uh, has started the Water Policy Center about 10 years ago. And uh, luckily for us, she is not stepping away. She's just stepping down as the director, but will be on hand at PPIC and still with water. But with the Water Policy Center, what we sought to introduce was a safe space for all of the disparate water interests and points of view, because as you know, 
Water is a heated subject in California. Yeah, there's a there reason why they call there's a reason why they call it the water wars, right? There's a yes. reason. Yes, yes, and 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 under those circumstances, then PPIC is Switzerland. This is a place where we convene all the different water interests to understand each other, to explain their concerns, to seek solutions, to seek organization, to under and so it's it's a place where. We speak on water policy because of the Water Policy Center in Ellen, and we have a Water Policy Advisory Committee of various voices about water to talk about how California can solve this and move forward because we're not going to solve anything by fighting. Right. You know, I, I, I first of all, I appreciate you refer to it as kind of the Switzerland on water issues because I'm part Swiss. And so I take that as a as a high compliment and, and we'll take it as Swiss. We'll take that. Um, you know, it, there are a lot of issues that you guys are handling. And I do think that your your work in the water spaces is really terrific because, you know, you talk to both sides, environmentalists or, or farmers or what other people, they all respect the PPIC's work in this area. Um, and so it is a great, you know, source that everybody can point to. We may disagree on how to interpret those facts, but we know we'll get the straight facts from, from the Water Policy Center. So it's it's been a great uh, addition to the conversation. Let me ask you this. There's a lot of other issues obviously going on in California. What are kind of what are some of these other issues that you're focusing on? Well, we're focusing a bit on the results of the pandemic and what it did in terms of higher ed and K through 12 education and just what it's done to college enrollment across the board. We're looking also at health care issues and also health care workers and pan the pandemic effect. We're also looking at the economy and California's economy and looking at in this space how we find balance between businesses' needs and workers' needs. We're also looking at trends in California, what we're doing today, teasing that out long term to find out what California will look like 10 years from now. And, and you know, we also regularly publish very interesting fact sheets like birth rates and declining birth rates and who's moving out of California, who's moving in. The college explainers about is is a college four year degree worth it anymore? Yeah, it's a great it's a great source of information, uh, and I want to encourage folks to check out the PPIC website. And I want to thank our guest, uh, the, the Honorable Chief Justice, former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, Tani Cantil Sakayue, for joining us. If you want to stay current with state and local politics, you can sign up for our e newsletter by just logging onto our website at MattyInstitute.org. This is Mark Kepler for the Maddie Institute. Thanks for joining us. The views expressed in the Maddie Report are those of the individuals participating in the program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Maddie Institute. If you'd like to share your thoughts about today's episode of the Maddie Report, please visit our website at maddieinstitute.org.